youtube.com forward slash enter dubstep. The book Necronomicon Ex Mortis. Roughly translated Book of the Dead. I'm Funk Case, Circus Records, also known as James Hazel, to my uh, school castmates. Bass line extraordinaire, bastard. <laughs> I've been making dub stuff about two and a half years now, I think. I started it all as a joke. Sort of materialised nicely from there, really, because uh, yeah. I, I was a failed drum and bass producer. <laughs> which basically is the best way to put it. And uh, yeah, I'm lucky enough for dubstep to be so open arms with, with the style I made, and it wasn't really that big a thing when I started, so I was pretty lucky to sort of be a part of that nice. at the start of the whole thing. I made drum and bass for like six years before I started doing dubstep. Oh, wow. So, like, all together, it's about eight and a half years I've been producing. Well, the first two I made on the same day was one tune called MOD, not Make Our Day, MOD, which was awful and it was just like bah! it was just that for ages and yeah. then Gorilla Flex was the other one. No. MOD just floated about on the internet at the end of getting leaked I don't really care anyway but Gorilla Flex ended up getting released with uh, Make Our Day yeah that, that went out on 420 Records and did pretty well actually uh, 420 Records was owned by a guy called High Roller who I knew personally from drum and bass he went, he sort of he released all the first bits to get my name out in dubstep because I didn't have any contacts and then he ended up going in the army in the Australian army and now uh, a guy called True Funk owns it who was another guy I knew from drum and bass yeah I mean the second release was actually Matt from Genetics and he released Jericho and he, under hoax he's had a really good start with 420 the whole circus thing was basically I knew Dr P from the drum and bass days as well actually it's drum and bass link again he was known as DJ Picto at the time and he didn't have many releases and he was sort of the same as me and I think when we proper talked was when we both had a remix by a guy called DJ Cray and we both released on that and whinged because we never got paid for it and we ended up talking a bit more and more because I never really spoke to him beforehand and uh, we ended up trading dubstep that we both started and it sort of materialised from there and then he, he took so vexed off me and it's just sort of gradually you know, materialised from that. Mattress Punch has actually got onto a, a TV show called The Gadget Show. Programs, I use... Well, I used to use Just Reason, like Gorilla... All my older stuff was like 50 Calibre, Sovex, Gorilla Flex. That was all on Pure Reason, but now I use Just Cubase and Nuendo, which is like a sort of video version of, of Cubase. Well, the Reason Simps were... The obvious choice was Maelstrom. Although yeah. I, I know a lot of people use Subtractor, but it's too mono for me and it's not not as versatile. Um, a lot of people used Thor, but I thought that was too much of an effort to rewire everything. I just wanted to tweak knobs. And literally the whole thing is Reason. Like, I actually shared a, like a, a rack, as it were, on Reason, which was a custom rack, which me and Genetics actually had. And uh, we both used that. And it sort of gave it a cleaner sound because Reason's quite muffled as it was. We, we utilised that to its full potential and obviously you can yeah. hear what we come out with. It was more like my real my realisation of uh, wanting to get on Cubase was when I had Mattress Punch played on Radio 1 by Chrissy Chris. And uh, he played it, it sounded great, but it wasn't as loud and it wasn't as punchy and as clear as everything else, which I knew was made on Logic, Cubase and that sort of stuff. And I think from there on I just I got a bit fed up with it and thought, um, you know, I'm putting all this effort into reason when I could use less effort EQing on Cubase and get a better, better sound of it. Plugins. Massive is, is a usual one. I've fiddled about with some with some other ones actually, some weird uh, simps which I've tried to be different <laughs> in trying to uh, use. I've used one called Daedalus, which I've made some weird sounds out of in my, in my new remix uh, of a track called Levels. I use Daedalus and um, I hear some simps like sort of Spawn is another one. Okay. But um, yeah, I've not really um, utilised my time enough to learn other VSTs because I just want to plough through and get things done. So making tunes I spend ages on to be honest because I always make a tune and I end up leaving it and it goes aside and then again the remix come through and then that sort of gets concentrated on and I'll move back to it and then I'll have a new idea and I'll bring that on and it's sort of like I just group up a load of tunes I need to finish yeah. which is still the case these days actually to be honest but um, yeah it, if I was to spend like if I was to spend solid time on a tune it would take me a couple of weeks minimum at least because um, I spend so long EQing and trying to get everything to sound as you know together as possible and when I was using Reason I was mad automating everything to try and make every, all these little background details happen and stuff like that but Cubase have not done it as much I think I've been more concentrating on how to get my mix downs tighter and more beefy and yeah. all that sort of stuff and it's it's sort of it's worked out better I think so now once once I've learned my techniques of mixing down, I can start going back into my mad automations and doing all these detailed stuff. I, cre I created Mattress Punch on... on I heard a track by Suspi Suspicious Stench, Stench Man and uh, Suspect. 
and it was it sparked an idea in my head and I started making it at South Bound Hangers House actually in Brighton. Yeah, I just I just sort of made the idea and then I just I was bored of it straight away, sort of things around. I didn't really like it and I gave it to Dr. P and Flux and like, ah, oh, finish it, we want that Sovex B side and I was like, alright. Yeah. So I had to finish that whole tune in like a week. Uh, which I don't like doing because I don't like spending that long on tunes. I like spending ages on tunes. Yeah. But I had about a week or so to finish it, and I ended up finishing on a Eurostar train to Belgium <laughs> <laughs> when I was sat with Borgor and Flux Pavilion. But that worked out alright. Could have nice. been, been better, but you know, it still still worked out alright. So. I play um, quite a few instruments actually. I play uh, I play a bit of keyboard, piano, which I'm still learning now these days because I like I like doing my musical compositions in the background with all this f filthy stuff I do. Yeah. I've always taught myself everything I've done. I've always taught myself pretty much, and um, I've been playing drums for about just over ten years, probably, and guitar about seven years. Oh. Yeah, I've always I've always inspired to be good at most of the stuff I try to teach myself doing. So it was the same with producing. I think that's probably why it took so long for me to kick in, really, as a, as a good producer, because it's I didn't know stuff and I wasn't taught stuff. Yeah. So I had to learn all the stuff for myself and it took ages for me to finally learn how to layer and EQ and all this sort of stuff. And it's worked out alright because I've got my own techniques these days. Yeah. The whole thing of me getting to dubstep goes back to uh, one of Genetic's mates actually, who he actually was sending me dubstep. Well, I wasn't even into dubstep. I, when I made Gorilla Flex and stuff like that, I, was, I didn't even like dubstep. I oh, just made it for a laugh because um, he had a radio show and I thought, alright, I'll give him some ammo then sort of thing. That sort of spiraled out of him. He's, he's a guy called Panks. He's also known as Merv or Merlin, all these sort of names. And uh, yeah, I didn't really like it at first. And then as soon as I started making more and more, I started listening to it more because I was getting sent tracks by Joker and Bar Nine and and Rezo. And it sort of the whole thesis of listening to different types of dubstep at the start has sort of shaped a weird sound, which is what I sort of make today. It's kind of generic in a weird way, but like it's kind of I suppose it's different. I knew nothing. I had like four tracks. I had like a track by Nero, Joker, Bar Nine, and yeah, and Rezo, and that was it. That's all I knew. Beasts in the basement. Purple City, uh, I think it was, I can't remember, it was on Z Audio, that Bar 9 one, I can't remember what it was called, it was, um, Midnight maybe? Nah, it was, Strung Out? Strung Out, yeah, it was Strung Out, I heard Strung Out, yeah, and uh, Nero was uh, Remix, Bob Sparks track I think. Definitely more into dubstep than I was, um, a lot of my life now is obviously evolving around dubstep because obviously I have to make it and I have to listen to other people's tracks, and I love the tracks I get sent by some of the bigger guys, I absolutely love it. But, you know, it's, I don't think anyone can listen to one genre of music without having to want to change their style and listening to whatever bands and stuff like that. Yeah, it's, it's growing and growing, to be honest. My two producing idols are Taxman and Dillinger from Drum and Bass. Because I love, I love Dillinger, He's, everything he makes is absolute gold. Actually, the same with Original Sin, actually, as well, I have to admit. But um, I've always loved Taxman because he's always had a sound that I've always wanted to get, which is a big energetic sort of cymbals everywhere crashing mad energetic just madness and i always wanted that into my tracks and i think you can see that now in my music really my my music taste as a kid was um very bad i once listened to meatloaf um and my first album i bought was big willie star by will smith <laughs> i once asked my mum for the venga boys album as well nice. which i admittedly listened to on my paper rounds so uh, yeah influences there venga boys blah, blah, blah. Never really know what to say when on on the basis of giving tips to new producers. I think the best thing to do is think positively. Always listen to comments, constructive. But yeah, try to ignore the hate because it only it'll only uh, lead to you not not putting the full effort in again. Always put 110 percent in. 100 percent should never be enough. If it's yeah sweet, it should never be yeah sweet. It should be yeah absolutely banging. I want that out done. Um, always put the extra effort in. Make sure it's completely you know, done, and yeah, just always push to the bigger artists, and even if they don't respond, it's not because they're being disrespectful to you, it's because they don't have the time, but they, you know, they might play your stuff out, and um, without you knowing, but yeah, you'll find out from someone, but yeah, it, it will benefit you in, in the long run if you think positively and work hard for it. You can find Funkcase on myspace.com forward slash Funkcase, you can also find me on Facebook, my fan page is just Funkcase. Or if you want to find it on Facebook, it's facebook.com forward slash funkcaseuk or my Twitter is at funkcaseuk. <laughs>